This is the Ex-Jehovah Witnesses of Arizona bringing you information about the occult of the organization known as Watchtower with its members known as Jehovah's Witnesses. If you're interested in occult tactics and in false religion, this might be a channel for you. With that introduction out of the way, let's get started and let's let the truth shine light and lead the way. So I think it's really important that you guys start paying attention and researching and watching the Zionist movement. We know that Watchtower used to be called Zion's Watchtower, but a lot of people don't understand what Zion is. They think because if you're a Zionist that you're Jewish. Zionist doesn't mean you're Jewish. A Zionist, like I shared in the previous video, is just a definitional term of a belief system that people have. It's not an actual religion, for se, but it's associated with religion, but it's more of a movement. So I would categorize it as almost as if Zionism today is basically a secret society. So it's a movement of belief systems that a secret society is pushing, and that is the, how I view Zionism today. Now, secret societies have been going on forever, and they will always exist as long as people exist. So, for example, the uh, Talmud, uh, people claim that they're Satanists. This has been going all the way back to medieval times. So, are they? I don't really know. They could be, um, but they're a Zionist group. And so, one of the things that you can recognize with Zionist groups is Zionist groups have certain characteristics that you will see everywhere that Zionists are at, going all the way from a school teacher, going all the way up to politicians, to a presidential figure, world leaders. They all have the same issue. Once you stop for a second, research them, and pay attention to what they do and what they finance, you'll see a couple of things that seem to be really evident with Zionist belief systems. So one of the things that you'll notice is almost all Zionist groups are all about hiding the truth. They want to persuade you to do something, but they're going to use false information to trick you into doing this. It could be something as war. It could be something as maybe some kind of uh, sexual deviancy that they want you to do. Um, there's a whole list of things. But one of the things that you notice is when you hear what they say at face value, sometimes it sounds good. But then when you analyze it or you look at the data that they give you that supports whatever Zionist movement at the time that they're pushing, one of the things we'll commonly see is that it's not good for the population. It's not good for family dynamics. And that's one of the things I think is really, really, really important that people don't seem to understand. Zionists do not like the family structure. They hate the family structure because the family structure strengthens and creates a form of safety. Zionists don't want that. Zionists want as much chaos as possible. And that sounds completely ridiculous, but you have to understand, Zionist belief system is very simple. They believe that they are the chosen ones and that a world war needs to take place and in order for that world war to take place we need to have israel be its own state so they have to have their own country back so the goals of these people are very simple they will do say and basically do anything anything sell children it doesn't matter create wars famines plagues Whatever they can do to make sure that Israel is a country and that a world war takes place that wipes out the population and that the only people that are left after this massive war is the slave class. And when I say this, a lot of you guys are sitting here going, oh, wait a minute, you're tr talking directly about Jehovah Witnesses. You're talking about us being the slave class, Jehovah Witnesses, for when Armageddon comes. This archetype that Jehovah Witnesses have is super common, folks. 
if you start talking to Zionists, you start learning about Zionists, you pay attention to Zionist belief systems, this shit is everywhere. Jehovah Witnesses are just like everyday shit. There's nothing special. They're just the same exact crap with a little tiny sprinkle of different. Now, I want you guys to be perfectly clear, and I know that it, it, it doesn't seem like it, but it's important that I distinguish this. I am not talking about Israel Hamas directly. What I'm trying to present to you guys is that this is an ongoing thing throughout the centuries. This movement, these actions, not everyone in Israel is associated with the Zionist movement. Not everyone who is part of Hamas is associated with the Zionist movements. Now, and that may seem strange, but you got to understand, there are Zionists who are supplying Hamas. There are Zionists who are supporting Israel. There are Zionists that are, you know, supplying on both sides. So this is a huge integral thing. It's, it's a web of stuff everywhere. It's not just black and white. I wish it was so simple that you could just say it's black and white and it's just that, but realistically it's not. It's extremely complicated. There's all the politics that are involved in it. There's all these companies and things of that nature. But with that being said, I just want to throw that out there so you guys are like, oh my gosh, am I supporting one or the other? No. What I'm saying is it's wrong to kill civilians. It's wrong to go and send people and kill civilians, period. I don't care what side you're on. And there's nothing wrong with someone defending themselves from someone attacking them. But when you kill innocent people, there starts to be a problem. Now, most media is owned by Zionists. So I just want you guys to know that most American media is owned by Zionists. And so I'm going to show you a small clip of a Jewish leader who runs by you know, the Jewish belief system, the Torah. But this is different than a Zionist. So a Jewish Zionist and a standard Jew are completely different. And so I want to share you guys what the difference is so that the audience is aware of what I'm talking about. And then th this is going to link to Watchtower at the end of this. I'll explain why this is so relevant. As we see this last, uh, now this uh, last Saturday, uh, it was shocking to the world, but the world doesn't seem to take into regard the 75 years that every day, every day, almost you have Palestinian death and suffering. But we as Jews do take this into consideration. It's not how I personally look at this. It's how, as a Jew who's observant, who's following the rules of the Judaism, of the Torah, Judaism is subservience to God. That's what it's all about. It's a religion of 3,000 years, while Zionism is a mere 150 years. It's a transformation to nationalism, to have a piece of land. It's a, it's a political movement. It's a materialistic movement. It was started by Jews who are non-religious, and they're simply incorporating, using the name Israel, using the Star of David, uh, and, and claiming that it's a God, it's given to them by God. And we who are uh, following the Torah, who are true to the Torah, uh, stand up adamantly refuting what they're saying. The Torah clearly states that we shall not kill, we shall not steal. And, um, and the, the whole concept is uh, strange, is, uh, is totally antithetical to our teachings, contradictory. The Jewish community had been living together with the Muslim community and the Christian community. And since the this movement started and the, since they gained hold in the land and eventually got rule over the land, there's been endless bloodshed. There's uh, hate uh, that has grown a thousandfold. It's a wedge written between the Jews and the Muslims, and it's brought death and suffering to the Palestinian people and, and, and in the majority, but to the Jewish populace also. As we see this last, uh, now this uh, last Saturday, uh, it was shocking to the world, but the world doesn't seem to take into regard the 75 years that every day, every day, almost you have Palestinian death and suffering. But we as Jews do take this into consideration. We say, we say this is clearly a rebellion against God and it hurts us more than usual because it's being done in our name. And the rabbis you are seeing, the power bases that you are seeing in the settlements that is fringe to the Jewish communities, those are the ones who bought into this tale that it's God's wish. But the, but the, uh, the central 
part of Judaism, the very religious in whatever country, maybe in Argentina, the very religious says, no, we're dead set against this. We cry with the Palestinians. And therefore, what's happening today in Gaza, that they're, st that they're bombing them relentlessly. And, and, and they're pointing and they're accusing them of being animals. It's even hard to repeat. And whatever they say of them, uh, of, uh, of being terrorists, it's not, it's just, it's, it's all to cover their totally illegitimate occupation. And to that, I'll bring a, a simple proof. We lived together, the Jewish community, for hundreds of years in Palestine, in e Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Iran, in all the countries we lived and flourished as religious Jews amongst uh, religious Muslims without any human rights groups to protect us. We always lived together. We babysat each other's children, even though we have a distinctly different religion. And it was never a cause of uh, animosity. All that changed is the introduction of Zionism, the control of the land. And since that came, which is not 1948, uh, since the, 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 the 1890s or so, and they started coming in and taking over the lands, since then there's death and suffering, the Palestinians and of the Jews, because they are creating this fear, this hate, this uh, estrangement. I mean, this is, we can show many pictures how the Jews lived together. Anybody old Arab will tell you, and every old Jew, how we used to babysit each other's children, like I say, and help each other. And every, I've had many stories of people will tell us. So it's clearly what these Geben Gavir and these other people are saying, they are coming from Mizrahi. That is that segment that is religious Zionists, but not the so if you guys want to see the full interview, because you're only getting part of it here, or a vast majority of it, but um, Zionist is not the same as Judaism. So you can go look it up. You can find the video and watch the thing. So basically what he's saying is that true Judaism, you're not supposed to kill people. That's basically all he's saying. That's part of the, the Torah. We follow it, and we don't kill people. So the Zionists who are claiming to follow the Torah, but then are out murdering people and doing all this horrific things, they're not true Jews. And so this falls into the no true Scotsman fallacy. And I want you guys to be aware of that, that I understand that what he's saying, you can't control people and say that, you know, someone's not a Jew just because they don't do what you personally think is right. That is a no, uh, no true Scotsman fallacy. And now what his argument is a fallacy. I want you to understand that there are uh, groups out there that think this way. And that they are the true Jews and that this is not right and the Zionist movement and even Jerusalem itself isn't the appropriate way to do things. Now, I made that statement that Zionists have really powerful allies and I've told people that the current administration is a vast majority of Zionists. And a lot of people think that this is me just speaking out of turn and is ridiculous. Now, I want to show you that I am telling you the truth, and if you oppose the Zionists, they will do anything and everything they can to try to stop you and end you. End your careers, end your political aspirations, and they may even harm you. And I want to show you that, yes, what I'm telling you about the administration being Zionist is true, and then I'll show you an example of what they do to somebody who you all know. The most expensive real estate on earth. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and the Mar-a-Lago property is is not worth eighteen million dollars. I mean, that's absurd. Isn't it like eighteen acres? Yeah, it's huge. It covers both sides of, of the little you know key or whatever you call it, the little island. But the, the bigger question is the, the the question that was first raised by the presidency of Richard Nixon, that is now coming to fruition with the with the presidency and the kind of ex presidency of Donald Trump. We have a democratic system that favors Trump. Uh, in the sense that he won in 2016, he's winning the primary right now for Republicans in, in 2024. Um, but you have a bureaucracy that is dead set against him. And the rhetoric amounts to a, a very odd claim. They, they essentially say, we want to keep him off the ballot. We want to put him in prison. We want to bankrupt him so he can't become the president, even if the people support him. We want to deprive the people of making the decision. So you want to take it out of the realm of politics and into the realm of administrative justice or the criminal justice system right. and adjudicate it in that way on bogus pretexts. I mean, the, the cases are bogus. Um, and so what you're, the question that we're raising is who actually rules in this country? Is it the American people who get to decide by their vote 
who represents them in the government? Or is it the permanent bureaucracy that has accumulated so much power? It is a contest of how we think of our democratic system. And I'm of the mind that the people should decide, not the bureaucracy. Um, and this is a contest where Democrats are saying, essentially, we have to destroy democracy in order to save democracy. Democracy has very different meanings in the two usage, usages in, the, in that sentence. We have to destroy democracy as we've traditionally known it, electing a president through a vote of the people, in order to save democracy, which is ruled by expert opinion, ruled by the bureaucracy, and essentially left-wing hegemony, left-wing domination over institutions. And as someone who tries to maximize whatever I can do to push forward on these issues politically, it's not lost on me that if they can wipe out someone like Donald Trump, you know, we're, we're all table stakes relatively. Yeah. Um, and, and they're going to have no hesitation because once they cross the Rubicon, metaphorically speaking, um, you know, that's when dissent becomes a crime. Yeah, that's the point. Were I a Jew, I would be a Zionist. My father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist, for I am. Israel is essential to the security of Jews worldwide. The most expensive real estate on earth. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and the bar lago property is it's not worth $18 million. I mean, that's absurd. Isn't it like 18 acres? Yeah, it's huge. It covers both sides of, of the little you know, key or whatever you call it, the little island. But the, the bigger question is, the, the, the question that was first raised by the presidency of Richard Nixon, that is now coming to fruition with the, with the presidency and the kind of ex-presidency of Donald Trump. We have a democratic system that favors Trump uh, in the sense that he won in 2016, he's winning the primary right now for Republicans in, in 2024. Um, but you have a bureaucracy that is dead set against him. And the rhetoric amounts to a, a very odd claim. They, they essentially say, we want to keep him off the ballot, we want to put him in prison, we want to bankrupt him so he can't become the president, even if the people support him. We want to deprive the people of making the decision. So you want to take it out of the realm of politics, and into the realm of administrative justice or the criminal justice system right. and adjudicate it in that way on bogus pretexts. I mean, the, the cases are bogus. Um, and so what you're, the question that we're raising is who actually rules in this country? Is it the American people who get to decide by their vote who represents them in the government? Or is it the permanent bureaucracy that has accumulated so much power it is a contest of how we think of our democratic system. And I'm of the mind that the people should decide, not the bureaucracy. Um, and this is a contest where Democrats are saying, essentially, we have to destroy democracy in order to save democracy. Democracy has very different meanings in the two usage, usages in, the, in that sentence. We have to destroy democracy as we've traditionally known it, electing a president through a vote of the people, in order to save democracy, which is ruled by expert opinion, ruled by the bureaucracy, and essentially left-wing hegemony, left-wing domination over institutions. And as someone who tries to maximize whatever I can do to push forward on these issues politically, it's not lost on me that if they can wipe out someone like Donald Trump, you know, we're, we're all table stakes relatively. Yeah. Um, and, and they're going to have no hesitation because once they cross the Rubicon, metaphorically speaking, um, you know, that's when dissent becomes a crime. How many of you know that one of the main reasons why Adolf Hitler was so psychotic about killing Jews was because he believed that the Zionist movement and the Jews were one and the same. Now, the Zionist movement, right, I told you, is a secret society controlling things from a political sphere. They control your courts. They are selling children. They're doing absolutely disgusting, horrific things, right? Well, here's the really interesting thing. When Nazi Germany took over France and then took over um, some of the other countries they had invaded, one of the things that they had done is they had taken 
and declared war on Zionists. A lot of people don't realize this. They took all the Masonic lodges, raided them, took all their records, and so the Nazis know what the plan was for world domination that the Zionists had created. This is documented. This is history. This is the main reason why Adolf Hitler went completely psychotic to kill the Jews, as he was attacking the Zionist movement itself. A branch that was very in line with the Enlightenment, like that of Les Neuf Seurs, inspired by the ideas of Voltaire or Rousseau. Then there was an Illuminist branch, which was interested in the secrets of existence with the unknown. And in their papers, we found some very important documents on an esoteric figure of the 18th century called Martinez de Pasquali, a sort of wizard we don't know much about who taught a kind of Judeo-Christian Kabbalah. So, as you can tell, some of these orders or some of these secret societies are part of the Zionist or Zionist movement. So a lot of Freemasons are part of the Zionist movement, and they had a lot of um, documentation about their ways of influencing government and such, and their uh, thought and process about taking over the world. And so this idea that the Nazis had that these secret societies were running the whole world was part of the reason why Adolf Hitler was so psychotic and crazy. So because he found their documentation, realized how much power and authority they had, he went on a insane, mentally insane killing spree of innocent Jews because of some of these belief systems that he had. And I want the audience to be aware of this, that the documentation for the world takeover was in those documents. Those documents actually are still owned by Russia. Okay, So after the war, Russia took those documents that they stole from the Nazis, but the Nazis stole it from France and other places. Martinez de Pasquali, one of the great enigmas of Freemasonry. He appeared in the middle of the 18th century and founded a new Masonic order where brothers who were occult enthusiasts could practice magic. But to reduce the Freemasons to such esoteric practices would be to indulge in fantasies just as the Nazis did. The archives are also a great way to demystify Freemasonry, especially for those who didn't know much about it, and show that we were vital to the European culture that crystallized around the 18th century. Parallels between anti-Freemasonry under Vichy and the current anti-Freemasonry. There has always been suspicion of cronyism, of the presence of Jews, but that's not what it's about anymore. The Freemasons of 1939 recruited members from the left, but today recruitment has widely expanded. The only party today that could feel threatened by the Freemasons, and where you can find some anti-Freemasonry sentiment, is the far right. So I hope you guys are all understanding that the what we refer to as the left, and if you guys watch anything about politics, you know what leftism is, you know, the transgender movement, LGBTQ, all those things are Zionist pushed propaganda. All of that. Zionists believe that stuff and push that in order to destabilize civilizations, countries, family units. They're telling you their enemy is the far right. What is the far right? People who believe that men and women, mostly, you know, have the right to raise their children, control their children, and teach their children their belief systems. It's also the right to freedom, free speech, and the, mostly free speech. So free speech, the right to teach your kids. Um, also, pedophilia is a huge thing on the right. People who are massively on the right are anti-pedophilia. People on the left 
are pushing for acceptance of people with, I, I forgot what the terminology is, but they say uh, attracted to young people and all this other weird shit that they say. Those are Zionist movements, guys. Watch how it pays and supports that stuff. Now, you've seen the video on Monday, and you heard me talk about what Donald Trump passed. So I think it's really, really important you guys go back and you learn about the executive order that Donald Trump passed about human trafficking. Now, a lot of people think that Donald Trump is just kind of like imbecile, loud mouth comedian. I don't think that this is correct. And the reason I'm going to say this and that I think that Donald Trump is probably more intelligent than you guys realize is you got to understand he has been in the political sphere for very little time, but he has been in the public sphere forever. He has been a celebrity. He's been a businessman and he knows how to manipulate people. And one of the things that's really interesting about Donald Trump, which I did not know, is that Donald Trump plays chess, like the game chess, you know, that you know we always talk about, you know, and he plays it at a professional level. So let's just kind of stop for a second and think about this. This guy is not stupid, is what I'm trying to tell you. When he put these laws in place, he did the things he does. When he outs people... If you pay attention to what he does and the things that he does, it's extremely calculated. I'm talking like master chess player calculations. Like when he showed up and he brought all the women victims of Bill Clinton and put them in the first row, right, when they're giving anti-women speeches about Donald Trump, and then he throws it right back in the Clintons' faces. Now, that kind of stuff is smart and calculated. A lot of the laws and things that he passed are taking effect, and we're seeing them right now. Now, uh, Jimmy had uh, posted a video where they're talking about the buildings and stuff that have been captured to... There's like 2,500 but anyways, or maybe so it's 2,300. I can't remember. There, there has been over 2,300 companies, estates, that have been seized. So one of the things that it said is that if you're a company and that you're involved in human trafficking and you get caught being involved in human trafficking, they can take your company's assets. The U.S. government can take that. So I want you to kind of think about that for a second. So... The Zionists, one of their biggest money makers, or if not their biggest money maker, is what? It used to be drugs, but now it's child trafficking. So I know you guys think this is conspiracy theory, but well, why don't you guys look at the law? Why don't you look at what's going on? How many companies have been seized by the government that are affiliated with human trafficking? 2,300, guys. 2,300. Hundred. Now, look at J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan is associated with the Zionist movement. J.P. Morgan is associated with Watchtower, guys. <laughs> and look what happened. J.P. Morgan. What did they have? They had a ship with $1.3 billion in cocaine, which got seized. Hmm. Have you ever seen ships come over into the U.S. and get seized before? How much drugs make it into our country? How are they making it into our country? They're not all coming through the border of Mexico, right? Obviously not. That's stupid. But $1.3 billion. See, here's the thing. They're crumbling. They are starting to crumble. We're starting to see the good guys have laid traps and are taking the bad guys down. J.P. Morgan, if you look about his mansion, was seized. And he's saying they're doing it because it's an anti-climate movement. The anti-climate movement is a Zionist movement. It's simple. Anti-climate or the climate activists, the extremists, and these transgender pushing doctors, physicians, you look at the people and the money and the financing that's coming from this stuff, you'll start seeing other shit. Drugs. 
prostitution. Think about George Soros, guys. We've Nobody knew that name. Nobody talked about the name. Donald Trump becomes the president. He is one of the most well-known Zionists ever. And what do we know about him? He created BLM. BLM is a Zionist movement idea. That is part of their propaganda. We know that that was a false company which was ripping people off and spending the money on prostitutes. That is a factual, true statement based on their records, their tax records. They spent millions on prostitutes. Think about that kind of stuff, guys. So what I'm asking from you guys is when you see stuff, before you judge it, stop and think about it. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a clip of some girls talking about how they're going around and they're killing. Uh, they're, they're, they're supposedly Jews that are going around killing Palestines. And I want you to kind of think about it. Look at them. Listen. And then I want to point some things out. But I will have you see it first. And then tell me if you notice this. Strip to the southern part of the Gaza Strip. People in Gaza need to die. Is that seriously what you and think? I am, I am, kill a two people Palestinian. I don't believe you did that. I am in the army, you know, boom, boom, two people. We're making a maximum effort. Ready? Rock that. So one of the things that I noticed real quickly is that a lot of these things are on TikTok and these women are not just average women. These are beautiful women saying these things, doing these things, supporting these things. And they're so pretty that it comes off as weird and not right to me. It makes me think for a second, what's going on here? Why is their makeup perfect? Why is the... The level of makeup that these people are wearing looks professional. Why is the lighting perfect? Why is everything perfect if these are just random people? And it's not just one or two, but there are a lot of these. And when I see these supermodels who are fighting for Israel, I immediately start thinking, there's something not right about this. There's something going on that's not just, hey, we're here to help. Why are the most beautiful women I have ever seen popping up and saying we need to fight for Israel? I'm not saying one side is right and one side is wrong. What I'm asking you guys to think about is we know that Zionists are all about sex. All about sex. They're rapists. They're human traffickers. They're murderers. They're monsters. So... It's very, very hard for me to see these kind of things and to see the sexualization of warfare, the death of people, and go, yeah, this is normal. No, this isn't. And I want you guys to pay attention. I want you guys to think before you react. I want you to think when you see things like this. Are they Zionists? If they're a Zionist, whatever it is, media, company, country, world leader, is what they're doing harmful to you and your family or beneficial? And think really, really hard. If there is a group of people who are supported by the Zion movement, who want the Zion movement, that Zion movement is to create war, to bring the end of the world so that their Zionist people can create a slave race so they can own the planet. That is their goal. That is their belief system. That is their ultimate ideology. It is written in their books. It is not something they hide. It's very plain, very obvious, and they're very open about it. Think about this. If human trafficking is one of their number one resources for money to support the Zionist movement, 
companies like Jehovah Witnesses, who for some reason are having to sell all their kingdom halls and are having financial issues and are asking for money from their brothers and sisters, and other mega churches are having the same problem, certain social media groups are going out of business, certain channels are losing all their money, certain politicians' properties are being seized, certain celebrities' homes are having to be sold in California, telling you that, well, unfortunately, there's a law going on right now, and it's going to give us a tax on our mansions. And so we're moving away, and we just happen to see a sign that happens to be in uh, you know, California in a wealthy area in front of a mansion that a celebrity used to own, and it says, government seized property. Well, you know what? There might be something to that. I'm telling you guys, you should pay attention to what's going on because what the good guys have done has attacked the infrastructure of the money situation. Most of these companies that are Zionists that are based in their money and their supplies, in my opinion, guys, this is a conspiracy in my opinion, these companies that start to fall apart because the situation is going on, there could be something to look into. So if you're a major corporation, all of a sudden you're going to poop, and you just happen to have people who are Zionists who are running at the top, and all of a sudden we're shutting down the human trafficking market, and your company can't survive for some odd reason, well then maybe, just maybe, they might have been human traffickers. I'm just saying. It's really strange to me that so many churches are starving for money right now, and every one of those churches that is hurting for money and demanding they need more money right now They have problems with CSA and child abuse. I don't think it's a coincidence. If you research their history, they just happen to have Zionist belief systems. They just happen to have people associated with the Zionist bloodlines. Like, where does it get to the point where you start saying, you know what? I think there's something to this. How much evidence do you need that the Zionists are running secret societies, they are selling children, And the good guys are exposing them. My thought is that they were purposely letting us see this stuff go on. Think about conspiracies that took place before Donald Trump became president. There's so many things. But let's just focus on some of the really, really big ones that have really come out that just I can't believe that we're not caring more about. Number one... The Zionist files of their ideas to take over the world, Russia has them. Why is nobody talking about this? Why is this not like the number one thing that has been going on? Russia has only released a few of the documents. They've given boxes of the documents back, but they've capped a lot of the documents. The United States government has said that extraterrestrial life forms exist. Why was this never discussed before? How is that? How is it that Jeffrey Epstein, who's been operating for centuries and people knew about him, all of a sudden got exposed and ended up dead? The human trafficking thing, no one really knew was around. It is like everybody knows about it now. Media being owned by the Zionist movement, which they refer to as fake news, George Soros, which is the funder of BLM and was the funder of the LGBTQ movement and the transgendering of children, has been actually financed by pedophiles. How is it that nobody over the last 10 years ever stopped and said, why are known pedophiles supporting LGBTQ transitioning of children? Why is it that the LGBT communities who stand out against this are the worst thing on the planet? Like there's so much stuff about what's going on that is evident that somebody was putting these pieces in play for you to learn about them, see them, hear them. What about Hollywood? Everyone has heard rumors about Hollywood being satanic. Everyone's heard rumors about um, Disney. Now you know for a fact that it is true, these things were happening, and they're documented in the court system. Elon Musk's lawsuit is bringing records 
of their movement and their Zionist agenda that has been so important to them that they've lost 67% of the share value of Disney. Every Hollywood superhero, from Superman to Batman, every comic that comes out recently is depicting Superman and Batman as not really heroes. There is a war against us, and we are fighting back, and we are being shown what the pieces are on the mat. Well, I guess I should say the pieces on the board. That makes more sense. Not on a mat. I apologize. But I'm getting upset here, and I'm just like... It's, it's irritating when you show these things to people, and people just blow them off. So I'm going to tell you a highly inappropriate story, guys, uh, about myself here. So I have a friend who is not associated with this movement whatsoever, who's known me for a very long time. And I found out recently that person was telling people that um, I'm a right-wing conspiracy nut, and I have become like a right-winger, is how that person refers to me. The thing that really pisses me off about it, and the reason I'm saying this, I'm just going to vent here, I had told that person things that took place, okay, that are political, and I was correct with everything that I told him. I told him about Jeffrey Epstein. I told him about um, Hillary Clinton and the dossier. And I've told him about the Jehovah Witnesses you know, issue and then all the arrests and that are going to take place and all the things going down with the uh, Jehovah Witnesses being investigated. And he told people that I am a right-wing conspiracy theorist and I've been pulled into the right-wing occult. Now, the, the reason why I'm telling you guys this, because it really pisses me off, is this person is intelligent. This isn't like a simple-minded person. This person's got education. And I know this person is not a bad person, and that's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to tell you guys is there are some people that they have a worldview and they can't let it go. And then no matter how much information you give them, because I've shown this person in-depth discussions, I've showed him the connections, the paperwork of all these things that I've told him and talked to him about, and he still tells people with no evidence that I am not telling the truth and that I am delusional. And it upsets me because this person has a family member who was abused by... I'm going to say clergy. I'm not going to say the church. I'm not going to say anything. And so he knows that this shit takes place and that churches hide this shit. He knows better than anyone else. And they still make these stupid decisions. And this is why I make videos like this. Is I hope that my friend makes good decisions and doesn't end up having his children getting hurt because of his worldview and his refusal to pay attention to reality but some people will refuse reality no matter what my parents are prime examples my parents will never ever turn away from watchtower even if watchtower if they raided watchtower pulled kids in cages and rescued them from the clutches of the governing body and their satanic order they would still be Jehovah Witnesses. They would still say it was a frame. It's not true. It's right-wing conspiracy. And that's sad. And it really hurts me. But I've done the best that I can do. And that's the thing as I want to tell you guys is you're going to get upset when you tell people the truth and they just blow you off. But here's the thing. You told them the truth. They chose not to act. I hope you choose to act the right way. And that's why we do videos like this. I only want to help. I seriously, that's the goal. I don't make money. I lose money doing this. I don't get fame from doing this. We don't get nothing. All I get is the satisfaction of pointing out to my peers, my community that these bad things are going on and we should do the best we can to stop it that's all i'm doing and that's all the people who support me do and i want you guys to know that i get upset and i get mad and i know you guys do too when you're trying to help people 
and they just blow you off and they make asses of themselves. But your loved ones are going to make asses of themselves. And the only thing you can do is keep on trying and hope that one day they'll wake up. So do me a favor, please. Pay attention to the people your family and yourself are voting for. Don't vote for douchebags, please. I mean, there are choices. There is a bad choice. There's a worse choice. There's a terrible choice. There's an absolutely awful choice. There's a good choice. And there's a not so good choice. There's always a choice. And one is always better than the other. Try to find the one that is better. Please. Please.